Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, solve our first circuit analysis example. So in this example, a circuit involving uh, or containing a diode and a resistor with the voltage sources given to us. And the question is asking us to draw the IV characteristics. So by IV characteristic, it means that we need to draw the current of the diode versus the voltage across the diode. Or, well, in this case, we want to know what is the IA versus, let's say, VA, right? So the current through the diode versus the voltage source. So if the voltage source is changing, what would be the current of the diode? Okay. Uh, just to remind you, this is the model that we are using for a diode. So saying that we're going to use the fixed voltage kind of a model. So we have some sort of a VD on, or sometimes we use V tertial, VTH. Um, below that, we have a current, uh, a zero current. So this is ID, this is VD. And after that, we're going to have a fixed voltage for all different currents. Okay. So looking at this, um, maybe I, I should solve a simpler example before solving this example. Let's say that if instead of the circuit, um, I had a very similar circuit here. So let me actually write it here and then solve it in the bottom of this slide. And then I'll come back to the top and solve the circuit that is asking the question. So let's say that instead of this resistor, I have some sort of another battery kind of a thing. Right. Let's say this was, I don't know, one volt. Okay. And I wanted to exactly find the same thing, the exact same thing. So if I want to know what is the current of the diode versus the voltage of the diode, um, I look at this model up here and I say, well, I know that I care about the voltage across the diode, right? This is the definition of VD for me. This VD that is the X axis here, right? So if VD is smaller than V threshold or VD on, um, I know that I'm not going to have any current, right? So let's say that for, for the simplicity of the problem, let's say that VD on is equal to 0.7 for this diode. As I mentioned, this threshold voltage is given to us. So this tells me that if here is one volt, let's say this is ground, if here this point is 1 volt, I need to have this point at at least 1.7 for the diode to turn on, right? And this node has the voltage of my voltage source. It, it is VA, right? So if, the, if here in the bottom I have ground, here is my VA, right? So VA has to be at least 1.7 volts. So I know that... up to 1.7, so if this is VA and this is IA, I know that up to 1.7, if my VA is less than 1.7, the diode is off. And when the diode is off, I have an open circuit, right? Therefore, I have zero current, right? So before 1.7 volts, I have no current flowing through the diode. Above that, I could have any current there, right? That's not the point. Uh, that's not the point of this this circuit. I wanted to show you that if I wanted to, if I knew that what is the cathode, so this is the cathode terminal of my diode, right? If I know what is the cathode voltage, which was one volt here in this in this circuit, then I would have known what should be the minimum anode voltage to have the diode on, right? So it would have been 1.7. Now, going back to our original circuit, the problem is that the cathode voltage is actually dependent on, well, the voltage across the resistor. And that voltage is actually dependent on the current. So it's kind of like all of them are kind of like redundant, like basically they're kind of related to each other. So it, there is uh, basically, there's no way that I can actually start from one point like I did in the bottom circuit and get to the answer. I need to actually make some assumptions. 
right? So I don't know what is the voltage at this node, so I cannot say what is the minimum voltage at this node that turns, or at least initially I cannot say what is the minimum voltage for the VA that turns the diode on, right? But one thing I, I know is that I know how to analyze the circuit if the diode is on, right? So let's start with that. Let's actually approach this problem that way. So let's say that if the D1 uh, is on, meaning that it has some current, I know that the diode can be replaced with a simple voltage source with a value VD on. And this VD on, as I said, it could be 0 0.7, 0 0.8, whatever, it's given to us, right? So if that's the case, how does my circuit look like? So my circuit is going to look like this. I'm going to have the VA. And instead of the diode, I'm going to have this voltage source or battery of VD on. And then I'm going to have this resistor R1. Okay, now for this circuit, do I know what is the relationship between IA and VA? Absolutely, because, well, it's the simplest circuit that I can imagine from electrical circuits. So I would say this is VA. I'm writing KVL minus VD on minus R1 times IA is equal to zero. And from there, I can say IA is equal to VA minus VD on divided by R1. Great. Okay. So how does that look like on a current voltage kind of a plot? So if this is my, these are my axis, the X axis being uh, VA and the Y axis being IA. Then I know that this characteristics IA versus VA. So VD on is a, remember VD on is a constant and R1 is also constant. So this is a line with a slope of one over R1 and it's gonna hit the Y axis at negative VD on over R1. So something like this. Okay, great. Now, I know that this is the line if diode is on. So what's the problem with this line? The problem with this line is that, well, I've assumed that the diode is on, but I also know from the nature of diodes that diodes can only uh, have currents in one way, which is basically, well, in this case, is this way, right? And since this is the direction of IA, this means that IA can only take positive values, meaning that from this line, only this part can be valid, and IA is positive. Anything below this part is not going to be valid, because it's telling me that my current is going to be negative. Therefore, well, this part, the assault for, for at least anything less than that point, that voltage at here, this is not a valid assumption. Or let's say diode is off here, right? I cannot have negative current in diodes based on this model, right? So what is that point? Well, that's the point that IA becomes zero. Looking at this expression, I can see that IA becomes zero when VA is equal to VD on, so that the numerator is zero. So this is the point that I have VA equal to VD on. And the slope of this guy, we know that it is R. Okay. What happens before that? So if diode is off, I know that any, for any VA less than VD on, diode is off. Diode being off means that, let me use a different color. 
So this is diode being on. If diode is off, I'm talking about this circuit. So same VA, and then I have an open circuit, and then I have the RA, or sorry, R1. So you can imagine that in this circuit, IA is zero. Therefore, I'm going to have, I'm going to continue this plot that. So that would be the, the, the final answer for the current voltage characteristic. So it is telling me that this plot is telling me that if VA is greater than VD on, the diode is on, and uh, basically if the diode is on, my, my, my circuit works like a simple resistive circuit. I have a resistance of R, so I'm going to have uh, this kind of activity here, right? And if the VD or if the VA is smaller than VD on, then I can say that my diode is off and uh, I don't have any current flowing, so my current is going to be zero. So note that I could have looked at this from another angle as well. Um, I could have first assumed that diode is off, right? So if I started with diode being off, then, well, I knew that this would be the circuit. And in that circuit, I don't have any current, right? So if I don't have any current, what would be this voltage here? It would be if here is ground and here is VA, this node is going to be zero volts. Why? Because R1 is not going to have any voltage across it because V is equal to Ri, and when there's no current, there's no voltage. So here is also going to be zero volt, right? So if that is zero volt, then it tells me that it's kind of like going back to this circuit that I know what is the voltage on the cathode. Therefore, I know what would what voltage would turn on the diode on the anode. So knowing that the diode is when the diode is off, the cathode voltage becomes zero. Although I have a resistor here, the cathode voltage here is going to be zero then it's very easy for me to know that what voltage turns on the diode, what VA turns on the diode. I know that my diode turns on, it starts, by turning on, I mean it starts to have current, right? It starts to have current whenever I reach, whenever the difference between the two sides of the diode becomes the VD on. Because one side of it is zero, therefore this side has to be VD on. So I could have started from here and said that, okay, I know that for VA at, I don't know, negative infinity, I have zero current, and I know that things start to change when VA reaches VD on. And then once I know that after VD on, my diode is on, then I would have drawn this circuit and then calculated the uh, properties of this line, which is basically the slope and where it hits the axis. So I could have the, the lesson that we learned from solving this assignment, solving this example, is that um, with diode, we have to make assumptions. So we make an assumption on the diode being on or off, and then with that assumption, we try to solve that circuit. So once you assume that the diode is on, it becomes a voltage source. And we know how to, how to do, analyze a, uh, a circuit with a voltage source. Once you assume that it's off, it just becomes an open circuit. It's probably going to simplify our circuit a lot, and we know how to analyze it, right? And the only thing that you have to figure out is that where's the borderline? Where's the point that I go from off to on, right? In this case, we realize VA at VD on is the, that, that basically that point in the voltage that uh, changes things, okay? We're going to solve more examples so that uh, we, see, we see different, many different kind of variations of diode circuits so that you get a better hang of it.